Hey, biology students, if you are here, it is because you are reviewing a, um, a worksheet from lesson 3.1 in the evolution unit, rules from sickle cell disease. Uh, you've completed this, so now you're just doing a compare and contrast, see where you are. Uh, as you're going through this, make notes of any questions that come up uh, or anything like that that you can then take to your peers or to your teacher uh, if you need to. So, without further ado, again, my name is McGinty. I teach biology over at Ballard High School. Uh, glad to virtually see you again. So let's go over this. Uh, the question that we have is, what have we learned from, um, about how populations change? We're using sickle cell disease to help us answer this question. The first thing that we were to tackle is the concept of variation. Remember, variation is about genotypes and phenotypes. We learned in sickle cell disease that there are actually uh, three, there are three genotypes. There's AA, AS, and SS for producing the hemoglobin protein. People with the AA uh, genotype have normal healthy hemoglobin. Uh, the people with AS genotypes have something called sickle cell trait. They don't typically show uh, the symptoms of sickle cell disease uh, unless under duress, oxygen duress, uh, which means that if they're in higher elevations where there's low oxygen levels uh, or strenuous activities, um, uh, uh, athletic events, that kind of thing. And folks who have the SS genotype do have sickle cell disease. They experience the symptoms and uh, it could potentially result in a premature death uh, without treatment. It is a heritable trait and it is determined by the DNA. So that takes us to the next section, which is here, the ecology of reproduction. Um, humans reproduce sexually uh, through meiosis. Uh, so those are the gametes. Uh, it's the fertilization process. Each parent's gonna pass down uh, one of the two alleles that they have uh, and it is uh, a random process. So the inheritance then comes you're, you get a gene from the paternal father, um, you get a gene from the maternal mother, and uh, the combination then creates a unique co uh, combination for you, or I should say for the individual. The next thing that we have is the ecology of competition. There are four things that uh, humans compete for, food, water, shelter, and space. This is just like any other organism. Uh, we need these things to be able to survive. Uh, and, uh, and, and go forth and function in life as we need to. Ecology of differential reproductive success. Like I said in the previous video, this is broken down into the basic concept of who survives to make babies. Um, who's making offspring, essentially. When there is malaria present in the environment, it's actually the people with the genotype AS who are best able to survive. But when malaria is not present, uh, individuals with the AA genotype uh, are also going to survive. And that means that there's no advantage to the S allele. Individuals who suffer from sickle cell disease who have the SS genotype um, will have a disadvantage and they may not actually survive to reproduce. So the best uh, those best able to survive and compete for resources are going to be the ones who uh, survive to be able to pass on that DNA to the next generation. Okay, now the interactions uh, between the var those variations, the genotype phenotypes and the different ecologies, reproduction competition, and the uh, reproductive success rate changes in the population over time. So with the environments with malaria, we can see here that the S allele offers an advantage uh, to those with the uh, genotype AS. So that's that heterozygous genotype. The S allele will survive in the population at about a medium-ish, medium to low frequency. But in the environments without malaria, there is no advantage to having the S allele, so their frequency will be even lower. So that's the review of Lesson 3.1. Uh, rules from sickle cell disease. Uh, you've done a quick compare and contrast of what you've put down versus what you see here. If you still have questions um, or concerns about what you're looking at, uh, 
reach out to your teacher, reach out to your peers, talk it through. Remember, explaining your thinking is one of the most uh, effective ways of the learning process. Uh, so uh, try that out, explain it to somebody, and, and see where you go from there. As always, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for your time, and we look forward to the next adventure. Right. Take care of yourselves.